This is Sabine <laughs> with us, you guys. Oh my gosh. I have loved and followed her work for so long. I mean, her, and I was just saying that um, Sabine, I would describe her work, you know, how we're, we're talking about our branding and describing her work. I would describe this precision, just beautiful, dripping with beauty and so much light with the vibrant stones that you use. Thank you. So, and Sabine is in the section of, um, Sabine's in the section of uh, bezels expanded because of your bezel wires and your things that you make. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> so where did you grow up? I grew up in Germany and I left when I was 21. I moved to Canada and I lived there for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so um, I, I met someone and we got to be together for a while and he passed away. So I started making jewelry um, to basically cope with the grief. And after a couple of years, um, my best friend introduced me to her cousin in Norway. So uh, I moved to Norway to be with him. And then I started metalsmithing up north, way up north, uh, above the Arctic Circle. And uh, then we got married in 2013, or oh, 2012, sorry. <laughs> and yeah. then uh, we, we moved to Germany for two and a half years, and now we live in Denmark. And I think we're here to stay now for a good while, I guess. Yeah. Wow, how mm -hmm. interesting. Well, you know, it's just so interesting because it's like you, you probably were so influenced from the areas that you lived in. Who builds jewelry in the Arctic <laughs> Circle, right? Was there <laughs> any other jewelers up there? <laughs> uh, I think a few, yeah. Okay. Some good ones. But my style never really fitted in with the Scandinavian lifestyle. I think they're more used to um, really solid, um, simple silver and gold designs. And mine is more a little rustic once in a while. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I never really had a big clientele there. Um, most of my clientele is from the U.S., um, but, you know, it, it was so creative living up north because uh, the darkness, the 24 hour darkness in the winter months really got me to be creative. And so that that was a real bonus for me. I'm, I'm more of an introvert and I like to be at home. So this was great for me to start my metal smithing journey there. Wow, so interesting. So you would take like these dark days and dark nights and just be in your studio. Where were you getting your ideas from then? You know, when it's you know just... I, I have always been fascinated with stones. Um, my dad, he was a stone collector. He went to, you know, to go to these caves and with a pick and he, he was <laughs> excavating or, well, not excavating, but you know, I forgot the word for it now. Uh, yes. Um, prospect, I guess. Okay. And so he found a lot of agates up in the Black Forest area and I was always fascinated by that. And he had a big stone saw and he used to cut open the stones and was always a little fascinating on what they looked like inside if there was a druzy or you know yeah it, it was just really exciting for a child so yeah. I've just always had a love for stones and I think most of my inspiration comes from stones I mm -hmm. yeah I, I like to put different colors together and maybe some of them a little unconventional at times but I don't know I'm just inspired by stones mainly and Oh, and that so, makes sense when I see your, your photography. It's like you, you are building these beautiful bezel settings just to highlight the stones that you're using, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, amber, you yeah. do beautiful ambers. Um, yeah. Are you cutting your own stones too? Did your dad cut his own stones? And uh, no, no, okay. not really. He he used to make just clocks from okay. Spots. The clockmakers, we get all, yeah, yeah. There's all those tools for the clock. Yeah, makers. right. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I'm always like, okay, it's such precision little tools and things for the clockmakers, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. That makes but sense. No, I, I don't cut my own stones, no. <laughs> I wish I, I, it's something I would like to get into, but I, I, I think um, being a one woman show, um, it, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult and time consuming, but down the road, I would like to invest into a lapidary wheel. Yeah, yeah I could. That would make sense for you. I could see. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. 
and now there's all this yeah the, oh my gosh yeah so uh, yeah just yeah to buy these so there's this whole area in tucson have you been out to tucson no uh i regret the whole that. area like a huge um a whole huge show that just has uncut rocks you know that are just you you'd have to fly home your suitcase would be boulders <laughs> i know me and but my maybe, husband we talk about it all the time like uh, how would we have manage to, to get it all oh, back <laughs> oh yeah you'd have to bring him and get extra bags. oh you know you'd have to fly first class because you can carry overweight bags there's <laughs> yeah. your I mean, that, would, that would be great i mean <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but yeah, who knows? <laughs> but it's yeah. definitely a goal of ours to go to Tucson one day, and I hope we can make it happen. But like, do you you don't sell your jewelry very much? It's that is this also that style that you're talking about? That's more of like, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I I understand because uh, the Scan Scandinavian lifestyle is more simple, and um, I mean, I have some customers in Europe, um, but. They're more sparse. I think uh, people like to have more shiny things here and, you know, more really high end stuff, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of gold and more refined jewelry with, you know, high grade gemstones, which is fine. I mean, I totally understand it. But uh, yeah, I, I think my clientele is more overseas. I think people are not ready for it yet here unless they, yeah, it's, I guess, a different style of group that, that likes my kind of work here. And it's been tough with marketing because I don't want to put too much into marketing here because I, I don't think the market is here for me, unfortunately. Yes. I mean, I wish it would be, but, but you know, um, the, um, the VAT or the, the taxes we pay is 25%. So every sale that I make within Europe, I have to pay on average about 25%. So uh, it, it takes away a big chunk. Do you have artist friends out there or do you have a community? No, not really. Okay. It's different. <laughs> there is a little bit of a mentality here in Europe that, I mean, I shouldn't generalize, uh, you know, there's different groups of people, but generally speaking, um, it's being sort of frowned upon to not have uh, the papers or like an education in goldsmithing or, you know, if you tell someone you're a jewelry designer, um, then they ask, oh, where did you go to school? Or, uh, you know, do you have the education for it? And if you say you don't, then you're often not being really accepted into that environment. I mean- But you know, okay, so then when you're saying that, that makes sense that you're actually saying there's not very many people like you who do this real creative artistic work because yeah. in the United States, there's very, you know, if you go to school for goldsmithing, most of the time you're just at your bench and you're doing um, repairs and it's a job, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is more of an art form. And there's so many people who have, you know, so many people who are in clothing design and in fashion and in jewelry and in artwork who yeah. maybe have a college degree, but didn't study that subject. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. I know, you know, in Italy, there's all of, well, in fact, Richard Sally is going back and he's recording all of these jewelers and all of them are goldsmiths, you know, so. Oh, wow. Mm. So that makes sense to me what you're saying. That's interesting. I didn't really realize that. Yeah. Well, we yeah. love you here in the United States and Canada <laughs> because it's kind well, of really good. what it's about is this creative art form voice, mm. you know. Right. I mean, I, I, I think you don't have to have the papers. I mean, I mean, I see a lot of people that have the papers, but there's no real imagination behind their work, uh, not to be judgmental in any way, but, um, you know, I, I just believe that anyone can express themselves, you know, with whatever materials they use without having to have, you know, the education for it. Um, yes. I mean, sure, yeah. you can always take classes and, you know, further develop yourself but it, I, I think it's not really a necessity as such but yes uh, each yes. its own <laughs> yes exactly and I feel like that's the difference between you know we talk about being a fine craftsman and being an mm. artist you know and really thinking of the ideas I spent my very early years with all of these goldsmiths the, and in fact the first time I started teaching I was teaching my coal joints and I had 
I showed up and I had a whole room full of goldsmiths and silversmiths. And I was like, uh oh, this isn't going to go well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was yeah. people who really wanted to undo, like mm -hmm. just get out of this locked brain, you know, and get into yeah. some creativity, you know? Yeah. How would you describe, if you described your work and your brand, what would be your descriptive words? I, I would describe it as, you know, um, some modern rustic. Um, I, I guess I just like to use bold colors and yeah, um, I, I just feel like the, you know, the possibilities are endless. So I, I always try to find new ways to put stones together and, um, you make something interesting out of it. I could see in you, I noticed your work. And it stood out and I was like, oh, like licking the pages, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but wow. it's, um, you know, when you're talking about it, it's like your, your brand has so much to do with the light and the play against the stones and the color, exactly what you're talking about. You know, mm -hmm. I, that's the first thing I'm attracted to. I love in your Instagram, which we'll post your Instagram. I love how you I love your photography setting where you always have light dropping to highlight the stones. Yeah. So you, I can see that you love your stones, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 I guess they are the highlight of, of the piece that I make. Yeah. And I guess I don't really have a style as such because sometimes I think I'm all over the place, but I feel like it's nice to not be restricted by, you know, what people expect of you. Um, I know that I guess it's sometimes a little frowned upon when when you hear marketers say that or oh, you should have like you should know your customer which is true obviously but um, sometimes I feel like um, we are being a little restricted by you know not maybe being playful enough I think it's really important to, yes. to have that outlet to be playful with you know like in a non-restrictive way you know so well I I love that because that's bringing you to your freedom, you know? Yes. Yeah, right. Like you're yes. saying, like everyone wants to start pinholing you into what do you do? What is your work? Yeah. Although yeah. I can, when I look at your work, anything, if I'm scrolling on Instagram, you know, mm -hmm. I always know it's your, your work. So oh. there's a cohesiveness to your work. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That That's good to know. Yes. You know, I mean, I guess I just see it from my point of view but sometimes I think my feet is a little cluttered uh, oh. you know especially with all the focus being put on reels right now and yeah I, I, I guess yeah one has to uh, go with the times and I have to work a little bit more with that I, I guess but yeah it's good to know that uh, it's more of a cohesive look but sometimes I think it's a little cluttered but but you know we are our worst critic right that's right that's right yes <laughs> yeah. That's why it is really good to have like um, a group of artist friends around, you know, Yeah. to throw ideas around from, you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. Very yeah. important. Yeah. And yeah. even online. So that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. So that's really, you know, so the, the light, the beauty, the precision, you say a little cluttered look in there. Are you making your own bezels? Are you actually working with bezel wire and you're actually making your own bezels, right? I mean, not just... Uh you're actually building up layers on your bezels. Yeah, you're not just I mean, buying them that way. No, I usually don't buy bezel wire. I buy, what I usually use, I buy sheets of 0 0.4 millimeter mm. thick mm -hmm. fine silver sheet and I cut it to length or to size. And yeah, so, and then I texture them sometimes or use different layers. So it gives you a little bit more freedom than having pre-cut bezel wire, yeah. but you know, I guess it works best for me in that way. I've used I have used it, I guess, for many years now. So I'm I, I haven't bought bezel wire in a long time. Wow, <laughs> except yes, for gold. Oh yes. Oh my gosh. Well that extra work, it like really makes your work unique. You know, it's like oh, it's all these little tiny things that probably you've done it so long you don't even think about, you know. And <laughs> no, it's so actually. unusual. And people are always like, where do you find that bezel wire? You know, but <laughs> you're making your own, which I love that. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite stone or color that you're working with right now? Right now I have a little bit of an obsession with blue topaz and chrysoprase, uh, sort of the the strong summery colors. 
I just went to a gem show in France um, in Saint Marie Ormine. I don't know if you heard of it. It's the biggest, apparently the biggest outdoor gem show in Europe, and yeah. it happens once a year. And so we went there last week, and I picked up a whole bunch of yeah topaz and and uh, chrysoprase, um, rose quartz stuff like that, and oh, no. that gets me really inspired. So I, uh, the way I work is actually I have to have my stones displayed at all times. <laughs> it's, it's really silly. I mean, I, I was talking okay, to my it makes you today. Feel good. Oh my God, I love that. It makes you feel good, right? <laughs> yeah, it does. It gives, I, I don't know, it just, just looking at stones, it just makes me happy. I, oh. I need to see them at all times. So I don't really have drawers full of stones. Like most people do when I see others, they open their drawers and and I think, oh my God, like that, that's so awesome that you can be so organized and, you know, but uh, I, I, I need to see them. And I, I guess then I get sort of inspired by them. And when I see different colors and I think, okay, this and that would look good. And yeah, so yeah. I, I have them displayed in my studio. And actually my husband said today that um, I should build some sort of stand for it so I can have a better overview of them because oh yes I love that yeah <laughs> well yeah so that's your inspiration looking at your stone yeah. are your inspiration yeah. because that was another question I wanted to ask you <laughs> interesting so and then these are your you feel like this you're going to keep with all summer before yeah. you make yeah, I think so. I mean, unless like I find something really interesting. I mean, I'm always on the lookout for unique stones. But you know what I miss here in Europe the most is the lack of really cool, unique agates, jaspers and stuff like that, that, that basically you can only find uh, in the US. Uh, there's no one in Europe that cuts that kind of material. And it's really sad that I have to import them because that means also that I have to add an additional 25% sales tax, uh, which yeah. makes my work sometimes a little bit more expensive, you know, yeah. but um, yeah. So that's the only thing I regret is, or even going to gem shows, it's rare that you find really cool, unique agates. And, and I really love American agates. I mean, I, I used to work with them quite a bit until I, I couldn't find like certain um, um, cutters anymore that I used to buy from. So, uh, but I, I might get back to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> once yeah, I go to once you come out here, just bring all right. first class, oh 10 suitcases. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And loads of money. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's true. It's like, you know, when I think about it, it's like in the US, we've the Native American people in South America and Central America and North America have just, you know, brought such an interesting way of building that has influenced everyone here, you know. And agate yeah. is part part of that look too. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you have some amazing artists and even lapidary artists in the US. I, I just get so envious. I, I, I mean, if I could, I, I, I would move there, but <laughs> it's not as simple, you know? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Well, I, I actually didn't even realize that you were, you know, so far away, your work, your work is within our circle. You know, I know if you came out here to teach, there would be a lot of people who would want to oh, learn. Wow. Yes. Oh, uh, that's good to know. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. You know, when you're in an area every day where it, your work is different than what's around you, it's probably hard to keep that in perspective, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Get a little blinded by that, you know? Yeah. So what is this work behind you? This is. Oh, you mean those? Yes. Those lands? I think they're, they're an import from Bali, I think. They're oh. lamps, actually. They look like a little bit like two giant boobs, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're lamps on the wall. I see. I thought they were just an art piece. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, my but, husband is playing around. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he overheard me. <laughs> Does he want to say hi? He's playing with the lamps. Does he want to say hi? Yeah. yeah. He yeah, wants everyone. to say hi. And by the way, he's he's. Uh, always been super supportive I mean without him I, I couldn't do that I mean we do this business together he he takes care of of everything else but the jewelry making oh. um, he used to make a little bit components once in a while he still does um, but um, everything else he takes care of and which leaves me a lot of freedom you know to to do my work yeah. so I'm really lucky to have such a good partner 
Oh, did yeah. he, did you teach him components or did he know? No, I had to teach him. Okay. He's, he's a quick learner. So oh, it's, good. it's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. He used to be a, a, also an artist though. He is an artist in many ways, but he used to be a full-time musician. So uh, oh. we, we share a lot of creativity together and we, you know, we, we sit together sometimes and we hash out little ideas and stuff. So he, he's a great sounding partner and, oh, and a nice. supportive partner in many ways. Yeah. Oh, you're very, so, very lucky. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I'm very lucky. <laughs> so you do have an art, you do have someone to throw ideas around with. So that's cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's I mean, cool. we might not always agree, you know, on <laughs> yeah, that's right. Designs, but, but no, it's good to have, you know, a sounding partner right there. And then when you think, oh, you, you've gone over the top and, you know, this might not work at all. Sometimes it's nice to have someone to set you straight a little bit. It's like, oh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, sometimes, yes. you know, my head spins a little bit and into a thousand directions so yes, so it's good right. sometimes to have someone put the brakes on a little bit <laughs> and ground it yeah when you're yeah. working with your ideas yeah it is something about you know when you're working with ideas you're pulling things from here and when you're doing all the practical stuff it's kind of like right here and it's nice to get that balance right yes As absolutely a- absolutely yeah. yeah oh my gosh okay so what does your what does your work day look like or what does your week look like do you work twice a week three times a week like what do you have a studio (laughs) yeah I hate to say it but I work almost every day (laughs) you do that's fabulous good for you Uh, I guess I'm you know I'm old school um German you know work ethic it's like you know work 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 but um I also but you know I I love it and uh, I'm very disciplined. I mean, I get up at six o'clock in the morning and I have my quiet time for an hour. I have my coffee and I sort of just have alone time. And I really need that because when you live together, you know, 24-7, you, 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 you need that time away from each other a little bit, you know. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, start your day in a quiet manner so you can collect your thoughts and you can, you know, hash out what the day is going to be look like. Um, but no, I, I, I generally start in my studio around eight o'clock and, and I work till well, I take breaks in between, but I usually work till about four o'clock in the afternoon and I take my pictures and then I list because, you know, I, I see a lot of artists, they have these weekly or bi-weekly shop updates and I always admire that. I, I just have never gotten to that point. I wish I would be one of those people, but I, I just can't see myself listing 20 items at, at once. I, I just work day by day and I list what I make that day or from the previous day. Yeah. So, yeah, I, cool. yeah, that's yeah. a good system. I mean, you have, you're comfortable with it and you're happy. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I sure I, I take time off in between, you know, sometimes I just work a couple hours a day and, and we hang out or we, we do something different. Uh, other than yeah. making jewelry, because I think it's important to take a break uh, away from work uh, to do something else, you know, to also uh, get re-inspired. To take so, in, yes. Yes. The inhales yeah. and exhales. So you take weekends off though, right? Yeah. I mean, Sundays I usually work. Okay. I'm, I might do a little bit administrative stuff, you know, Photo- photography also yeah. and stuff like that but I try not to work too much oh so that's <laughs> good can... so I love that so your discipline do you feel like the discipline of showing up every day has gotten your work to where it is yeah I, I think most definitely I think that uh, you know um, being self-employed is not easy especially I think doing what we do um, mm-hmm. because I think if you don't if you're not disciplined enough, I, I think it's a little disruptive. It might not get you to where you want to go. I mean, unless like you're okay with it, you know, but for me, it's a full-time job. So I, I kind of have to be disciplined because I feel like if I would, you know, watch a lot of TV during the day or, or I do other things, then I would lose my focus. And for me, mm-hmm. it's important to just have that flow of, um, you know, of work. So um and yeah, hopefully also keep on being inspired. But uh, no, I, I, I like to be disciplined. It, 
and working so it it, it really makes me happy <laughs> yes I love oh my gosh I love that yeah the discipline is is really good so and I yeah. know people always love you know people always will want to know how you got there and how you know and it really is mm. it's you know there's some people that like to show up every day yeah. and some people that just want to show up once or twice a week you yeah. know and yeah you know, it's like you're everyone, you can do what you like, but you're going to get there with a solid voice showing right. up every day. So that's why I'm yeah. glad that you said that, you know, you just spoke the yeah. truth. And I mean, that's it's, where it's, work it's hard it work. Is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy. I mean, it's, you know, a lot of people think it's glamorous to be a self-employed artist or, but it really isn't. It's, it's a lot of hard work and, you know, during slow times, like right now, it's hard sometimes not to just freak out and 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 lose it you know you, oh, you start to question right. yourself you know yes. so uh, it, it it's it's a tough thing sometimes to be your own sort of psychologist in a way you know I mean you can't complain to others so much about the tough times because you know a lot of people say well you chose that you know you chose to be in that position but you know it you know the economy is what it is and sometimes you just have to find a way around it and, and make the best out of it but it's it's not always easy yeah I mean um it's not glamorous yes <laughs> As right. you probably know <laughs> right yes exactly yes I know a lot of people would see me when you know I was teaching the class and you know I have my jewelry and you know you're in a good place but it's a lot of sweat in the background you know and yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the day-to-day -day stuff of like building, you know, yeah. slowly but surely. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. really is true. And when, you know, for, for me, it's like there's people who are like, oh, I, well, I just want to be an artist. You know, it's like, okay, all right. Yeah. You know, but it's, it's yeah. exactly what you're saying, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So in your day-to-day, -day, you're even if if it's slow for you right now, you're still going in and working every day and building your work because there's other times where you're not going to have enough inventory. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's good to show up every day, you know, or, you know, for the most part of the week and, and just continue working. I, I think that's important because if you stop because there are slow times or tough times, then <clears throat> I, I just think you lose your flow and the con <clears throat> excuse me your confidence. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it's it's important just for your for, for your own sake to show up and just continue pushing through the tough times. I, you know, and and there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, even though at a time when it happens, you know, it's it's hard sometimes to look beyond that. But um, for the most part, I think you you just have to you know have the confidence in yourself to to know that, you know, there will be better times ahead, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's a really powerful statement. I like that because I actually wanted to ask you too, it's like, um, how, what would you, what would be a good tip that you would give like up and coming jewelry artists? What would be a good tip that you hmm. would advise as an established brand? Hmm. I would say that um, to, put your work in every day, even if it's just a little bit and to, you know, develop your sense of style and to know who, like uh, what audience you want to make jewelry for um, to find your own style and just grind, you know, be there, like don't give up if, if you don't have sales at the first, you know, couple months or, you know, however long it might take, but uh, don't give up. I, if, if you really burn for it, you can do it. And, and um, you just have to put in the work and not give up. I mean, I, there were countless times uh, previously when I felt like, oh, I can't do this anymore because, you know, lack of sales or whatever was the hindrance at the time. But you, you just have to push through it. Like, don't give up. If it's your dream, if it's really something you burn for, I think you will go the extra mile and, and stay the course. I don't know. <clears throat> that's the advice I can add, like to just work hard and, and not give up mm -hmm. uh, if this is your dream. You mm -hmm. know? And, and how were you able to, you know, what type of advice would you also give? Like when you, I know you've had to go through this of when you 
build your pieces and it really is part of you because you're you're a creator when you're you know, when you're a technician, you're not as attached to, okay, I'm going to put this diamond ring on the gold band and it's going to be like this, this. You're not as attached. When you're really yeah. putting your heart and soul into your work, how were you able to, if you can think back at the beginning, how were you able to, when show your work and have courage to stand there with your work, you know? Because, right? Is this, this is a hard thing to do, right? Yeah, that is not easy. It it makes you feel a little vulnerable at times, you know, um, but yeah, I, I guess I, you know, when you have built a little bit of work, uh, you, you, I guess you can find a little bit of confidence in yourself and you just think, okay, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll put this out there. And, and it also gives you a little bit of a chance to see the reaction from others. And I think it's also important to get that kind of, um, uh, maybe criticism isn't the right word, but it, it's important to not be afraid uh, to show your work if, if it doesn't sell right away. So you like you don't give up right away. Yeah, I mean it's not always easy. Obviously, when especially when you first start out, I I know that I I get sometimes messages from um, jewelers or from from artists that are just starting out and they ask me for advice and. I mean, I often say, you know, don't be afraid to put your work out, even if it's not, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, um, perfect, if there's even such a word for it. You know, I, I just think that it's just important to put yourself out there and put your work out there and uh, it helps you grow to also see the reaction from that you get from others and just keep on plowing through, you know, eventually when you get better, better techniques and better design ideas. So I, I think it's just important to, uh, to take that leap and, and, and not be afraid because I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah, if, if, if people don't really like it at first, you know, I, and I also think that social media is, is, is a little tricky. Um, it's all about likes. And if you don't get enough likes, I know artists, they delete their posts if they don't get mm -hmm. enough likes. And I think that's really sad because you know, it, it keeps you from growing as an artist and just don't think about right. the likes and the comments. Just, you know, just put yourself out there. If eventually it will snowball and then you will get more followers and you will get customers and just uh, keep getting, you know, better at work and, and just stay the course. I, uh. <laughs> Excellent advice. That really is. Yeah. Excellent advice. So then where can students learn more about you? I mean, Do you have any uh, of your jewelry on? You guys should see her jewelry. Do you have anything <laughs> with you that you want to hold up? <laughs> there, bubbles. See that light? Precision light. Uh -huh. oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, my work is um, mostly, uh, I guess, available on, on Instagram. At, uh, it's a little bit, I guess, uh, difficult to pronounce, but it's a uh, Schurstrand Studio, you know, uh, at Schurstrand Studio, S J O S T R A N D, mm -hmm. and uh, the Schurstrandstudio.com. And I'm also available on Etsy through the oh, same name. Okay. So that's where you sell from, Etsy. Yeah, Etsy and my own website. Yeah, we, we're trying to transition a little bit now to our own website, but it's it's a little bit difficult right now. <laughs> I, I'm not the best with, uh, you know, um, uh, algorithms and, and all yeah. that. So I'm, I'm still working on that. You know, okay, now wait, if people go, I'm pretty sure people go to your Instagram site, they yes. can go into your, and your website will be in there, right? Right, yes. yes so the Beam cool. Studios is your Instagram. So it's the easiest way to get there. And then you guys can find the spelling, but by this time we'll have it. It will have it posted too. Okay. So, and her work is just amazing, oh, thank beautiful. You. <laughs> thank you very much. So, so I'm so grateful to have you in here. The book is here, and you have your copy coming in in the mail. That's where you guys can find Sabine and her work. And I just admire you so much, as you know. Well, and likewise, um, Susan. I mean, I love your work, and I love your spirit. I mean. I, I, you brighten up my days with your videos and, and your <laughs> I mean, you, you're just a, you know, a, a light in this oh, world. Oh, 
Thank so I, I really you. mean that. And so oh, uh, I, I love you. your work. Well, yeah. we'll have to get together and talk about, um, uh, you know, coming out here because I think people, you know, the thing is, is that people are so curious about, you know, if you're, you know, trained in Germany or grew up in Germany, mm -hmm. you're, you know, it's some of the things that I, when I teach, I always talk about like, where are you from? Like really bringing in who you are and where you're from. Mm -hmm. And I believe what you could bring into the classroom is just some beautiful precision, some mm -hmm. kindness, some open to, you know, this type of work mm -hmm. that you do. But I think you'd be able to really turn people on to some different techniques that we don't do here in the United States, oh. you know? So I think it would be really fun. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sabine, for well, everything. Really. And your well, work is- Well, thank you too. Cool. I mean, this is huge for me. You know, I mean, when you first contacted me, I was like a little in shock. I thought, what, me? <laughs> oh yeah, poor me, like, I just- yeah, Oh I my gosh, know that your brand is strong. <laughs> Even if where you're at, if it's not strong, know in the United States that your brand Look at how many followers you have. You know, people mm. notice your brand. Yeah. Thank you so much okay, for everything. Much. I really appreciate you. Oh my gosh. Same. <laughs>